So a new accused story in half an hour. Andy Serkis takes on the role of a taxi driver who snaps. But first, Panorama on BBC One and BBC One HD. Hello, I'm Jeremy Vine and this is Panorama. To some, they're just a bit of fun. To others, they're a threat to our well-being. This is dangerous. This is a dangerous tool in our house. 24 million people in Britain play computer games, but how many become addicted? I would never inflict this game on anyone. This game is just a disease. We reveal the hidden devices in the games designed to keep us wanting more. I think people don't necessarily understand how powerful some game mechanics can be. Half of all Britain's homes now have at least one computer games console in them. The industry employs around 30,000 people in this country and we are widely acknowledged to have some of the best games designers on the planet. World of Warcraft, the most popular online game ever, launches its latest edition at midnight tonight. And with Christmas pester power at its peak, Raphael Rowe has been investigating the controversial subject of computer game addiction. I'm at a premiere of a major blockbuster opening in London. But the stars here are not Hollywood actors. They're virtual characters in a computer game. I just can't believe how many people are here just to buy a game. It's now 10 past 11 at night, and most of these people, if not all of these people, have come here to buy a copy of StarCraft. This queue has gone back from Oxford Street right round the corner to the end of this road. In the past five years, computer gaming has exploded in popularity. Oh, I love playing video games. I play games every day. I've been waiting for this game for a very long time. We spend more than three billion a year on gaming, more than we spend on film or music. And gaming has shed its nerdy image to become an essential part of youth culture. As a parent, I often wonder what effect it will have on my children. It's an immersive, interactive, cinematic experience, but is it too much for some people to handle? In Nottingham, Joe Staley has enjoyed computer games since he was a small child, but then he bought an Xbox. I, I just seem to spend more and more time playing. It started with Grand Theft Auto 4, moved on to, I think it was Call of Duty 4, which was the new one at the time. Call of Duty is the best-selling game in Britain. It allows players to fight battles against each other over the internet. I wouldn't move from my bed, because my controller would be on my side table. I'd turn it on, play, then realise it's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It could be up to a full 12 hours or more, or overnight. When did you first notice that you had a problem? When I stopped going to lectures, ran out of money, and had friends ringing me up telling me that I was playing too much. I realised that he was addicted before he did. He would eat, sleep and play games. And sort of generally being a social person just all went out the window and gaming just became his occupation, I suppose you could say, like, this is what he did. Why? Why do you think you were addicted to this game? And what do you mean by addicted? I couldn't physically pull myself away from the console. I could go two or three days without sleep just because I was playing a game. And that, to me, sounds like an addiction. His habit cost him dearly. He's been thrown out of university and left thousands of pounds in debt, partly from buying games. <sighs> it's a fate 20-year-old Leo, not his real name, is trying to avoid. Three years ago, he bought World of Warcraft. Easy. It started off being addictive because there were a lot of stuff I wanted to do at the maximum level, so I would spend as many hours as I could until I finally got to level 70. 
With more than 12 million players globally, World of Warcraft is one of the most successful computer games ever made. Players can explore its mythical world for a monthly fee. You substitute the real world for this world. I mean, two years I've been playing, 12 hours of the day online for two years, if you want to look at it that way. Um, it was fun while you were playing, but then when you think about the derogatory effect it's having in your life, then, um, <laughs> then obviously you don't feel so good. His university work is suffering. He's lost contact with his friends and damaged his relationship with his family. I would never inflict this game on anyone. This game is just a disease. It's just horrible. It's very hard to explain properly. You really, it's one of those things you really have to experience. He's now decided to go cold turkey and stop playing the game. I mean, you know, I'm really trying not to, you know. I'm doing a lot of things that I would otherwise wouldn't have done to fill up time and to motivate me. Oh, man. This is really hard. This is Pong, the first commercially successful home video game. 7-0. Games have come a long way since the 70s. The National Media Museum in Bradford is a good place to come if you want to see how far. These photos exhibited here show what a powerful form of entertainment they've become. Basically, I've filmed people through the screen um, on very high-resolution video and capture their uh, expressions as they play video games or watch TV. Robbie Cooper has spent the last seven years taking these pictures. What was the difference between those that were playing computer games, PC games, and those that were watching television? And the video game pulls people in much quicker. That kid over there, he cries when he plays video games because he doesn't blink. He is so engrossed in what he's doing that he literally loses the blink reflex and he just starts crying. I've seen some of these expressions on my boy's face when he plays. Like these kids, he's not addicted. But I sometimes wonder how much is too much. Stories of computer game addiction are nothing new. But it isn't recognised as a medical condition, and some argue it's a product of media hysteria. In the early 1900s, we were worried about the waltz. In the 1950s, we were worried about the demonising of society by rock and roll. Now it's games. Ian Livingston's company makes the Laura Croft Tomb Raider series. You could say people get addicted to football, get addicted to the internet. They used to say that people were addicted to television. There are people out there who do say that they've become addicted to, to games. They probably might have addictive personalities. They might be addicted, inverted commas, to some of the other entertainment experiences. But there's no formal published medical evidence saying that games are addictive anywhere in the world. He's right to a point but there are growing calls from some in the international scientific community to have gaming addiction formally recognised. The World Health Organisation has described addiction to some games as a serious threat to the mental health of young Europeans. But the industry body, Yuki, says research shows games boost intelligence, reduce stress and are valuable learning tools. Something passive media like TV would do well to emulate. Playing video games and, and, and participating in interactive entertainment is a much more beneficial activity than, than, than participating in a passive medium. And actually, there are many, many positive things that can, can derive from that. When Alison Dando's son, Chris, started refusing to go to school, she had no idea why. Initially, we didn't connect it to the computer game playing um, at the start because it was just something that every boy did, and particularly a lot of the boys that we knew and friends of ours. Yeah, we had the internet. Yeah, um, both the children had computers in their bedroom, but there was nothing that particularly alarmed us. Chris had been playing World of Warcraft through the night. 
it, it brought you into another world. Like, you could be what you wanted to be. You were a warrior, you were a shaman, you were a mage. You could have the best weapon. It was like, you know, I've got to stay at home. I've got to do this. He was playing for up to 20 hours a day. I remember there was one point where I think our, our actual internet just went down. Um, and I started sweating and I actually started shaking just because I couldn't play it. Once I understood that this game was online, I was saying, right, OK, well, the answer to it is we cut off the internet. That's it. And the response was just an outpouring of violence. He just went berserk. I put on a boot and I kicked a hole in my sister's door. Um, I just smashed anything I could see. It was really scary. It got to the point where, you know, my dad almost had to pin me down on the ground. That was the point where we started to really understand, from a parental point of view, gosh, this is dangerous, this is a dangerous tool in our house. One of Britain's leading child psychiatrists says he's treating a growing number of cases like Chris. I do think this is something that needs national recognition. In many ways, this can be an invisible problem because a young person is not necessarily creating any immediate alarm. They'll be quietly tapping away at a keyboard in their room and there is no immediate risk to them that would be apparent. 66% of 5- to 16-year-olds have their own console. Could this be a hidden problem building up in homes across the country? I went to meet a world authority on the psychological impact of computer games. The good news is, is that for the vast majority of people, video games is something that's very positive in their life. But we have to take on board that there is a growing literature that suggests for a small but significant minority, things like gaming can be potentially problematic. My research has consistently shown people seem to display the signs and symptoms that you get with other more traditional addictions. He says there isn't enough research to be certain how serious the problem is. People put money into alcohol and tobacco addiction, maybe even into gambling addiction, but in gaming addiction, it's, it's kind of so new, people don't see it as an important research area to look into. The little research that has been done suggests it's online games that cause the most concern. In the UK, we still play mostly console games, but that's changing. Within five years, the government wants all of us to have broadband internet access. One inspiration for this plan is South Korea, the country with the world's most developed internet network. 85% here have fast broadband and more than half play online games. But the government says it's created addicts. I've come to see what we can learn. At first glance, our digital future looks bright. Even here on the underground, not only can they make telephone calls, they can connect on the internet and play online games. Korea's broadband revolution will help their economy grow by 6% this year. But it's come at a price. 